The phone call is coming from inside the house. This week yeah. on the first to last of the Nerdum, Mike and Tom take out Black Christmas. Have a holly jolly slashing. Black Christmas. <laughs> get, get out of the house, Jess. Get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, Mike. <clears throat> and I'm Tom, and we're the first to last the Nerdum, and we're here to talk about everything nerd related uh we uh do this every now and then usually once a week and we um we we talk about anything uh that's nerd related whether it's comic it's a comic book a movie a uh we like sci-fi horror fantasy and uh everything that a nerd would love um we we have, we've been specializing in the 80s lately uh, we thought we'd dip back into the 70s uh, this week, but um, yes, with sir. the 1974 Black Christmas. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, tell tell everybody about us uh, yeah. and the nerdum. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Thank you for uh, bringing us in, uh, Tom. Uh, yeah. So mm-hmm. so uh, first, oh, wrong uh, wrong one. Got to go to scene two here. <laughs> there we go. Hey, uh, mm-hmm. so, so who are we? What are we? Uh, we are Mike and Tom. We are the first, last, and nerdum. Uh, we have sixty-one folks that uh, decided to, to uh, follow, so thank you, uh, and we appreciate that very much. We appreciate the comments, the likes, the the sub, uh, scrip- uh, sub- new subscribers. Uh, we uh, I'd like to say that we are still driving. We got a week and a half left in the year, and uh, I also wanted to call uh, attention to uh, to uh, your last video, which was a solo <laughs> one, which where you re- you returned us to the Book of the Fallen. Um, and, uh, tell, and, uh, and by, oh, congratulations, man, that that's on fire. Uh, uh, it's doing <laughs> great. Uh, and so was your first one too, which kind of started this thing of like, people want to hear more about, uh, the book of the fallen and what your thoughts are on it. So congrats. Uh, yeah. yeah. T- t- uh, tell us a little bit yeah, more that- about that, that one and, and, uh, and, and what, what, uh, what that's about. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, we we haven't really focused much on books, but uh, but yeah, books are um, my and Mike's first love. Uh, we uh, we love to read, so uh, yeah, I, I and I was really taken with the series, and uh, so I waited <laughs> to do like a halfway uh, book series, and then uh, I'll probably do a, a little video for each of the final final ones that I read. I'm currently on book eight and loving it, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I was kind of happy with how everything turned out, and it's uh, more of a reaction, not a really a review, because I think at this point, six books or seven books in, uh, you can't really review the book because everybody's either all in, have decided to finish out the series, or already right. noped out. So it's more of a reaction to kind of compare notes with the uh, other readers of the series. Uh, absolutely, that yeah, like you were saying, yeah, uh, we prefer. If we have a preference, it would probably be books. And uh, one of the things that uh, we, that I was just uh, commenting on a little bit ago when I, before our, <laughs> the, the the thing we had a technical glitch. Uh, <laughs> second runs the best uh, was the fact that um, <laughs> when you can find yourself in the apex of a book series or a set of series in a world, um, that's like the that's the that's the peak. Uh, that's the best place to be in. Yeah, because uh, there's, few, there's yeah. Yeah, that, like you said, yeah, there's so many times where you start a series and you go, yeah, not quite, not quite what I wanted. Right. Uh, but yeah, yeah. when when it, it all kind of gels in and it's that perfect fit for you, it's um, yeah, and 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 adversely, if you spend a lot of time, or if a lot of time goes by where you're not reading, it's almost like you're missing a limb. <laughs> yeah, and and there are some authors that you you ha- you kind of have a craving for uh, that you like to hear uh and, and it's few and far mm-hmm. between here or there but uh yeah. always always dope when you can do that but in any case uh I wanted to say uh, uh lastly before we get into our main topic here Black Christmas um on the IMDb's and the Just Watches uh and and our reaction our take our recommendation mm-hmm. or not um <clears throat> that's happened before yeah. uh, I just wanted to say uh, please co- uh, comment, like, subscribe, uh, but mainly subscribe. We really, really do appreciate that. Uh, and so you can get your first row access to our content um, and mm-hmm. also our back content. So uh, we are, this is our second Christmas. We're rolling into it. And uh, and also, oh mm-hmm. yeah, before we go, uh, Thomas uh, carries our banner on Twitter or X, X, whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, and of course, we're home is YouTube. Um, and uh, sometime next year, early next year, I'll be getting on the website and uh, doing a little cleaning house because it's been a habit, but it's it's a mess. Um, that's just because I get too finicky with my 
technical things and anyway but uh so yeah so uh, here we are oh my god are you serious okay cool <laughs> i was like please don't screw up again <laughs> like, it went black and then and then it was like dropped you out and then i had to restart the thing but anyway black yeah so tell us about this so this is one of your favorites correct yeah yeah so but you know the 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 old and tired argument at this point where whether or not um Die Hard's a horror movie or whatnot, uh, or not a horror movie, but a Christmas movie. I'm over in the corner saying, uh, my favorite's Black Christmas. <laughs> well, and Prometheus yeah, I... <laughs> could be considered of the, the same uh, Christmas movie, too, loosely. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, it's, um, yeah, Black Christmas came out in 1974. It's one of those movies that uh, is a cult classic. I think it's, um, it kind of got buried for a long while and no one really knew about it until uh, about the early 2000s they uh they released a dvd of it and that, that's actually i didn't know anything about it until the 2000s when the dvd okay. came out and i landed upon it because um when it came out uh <laughs> the year it came out i was i was very young so uh, <laughs> i wasn't uh you know horror wasn't my thing back then <laughs> so uh, so yeah uh, it, it was a, I, I rediscovered it or discovered it in the 2000s and fell in love with the movie. Uh, it's one of those. Uh, it's the first slasher movie, arguably, and uh, definitely the first um, uh, you know hol holiday themed uh, slasher movie. Uh, although uh, you know the the director calls called it a psychological thriller, but but you know it, it has all the hard hallmarks of a slasher movie, but with a really really good story and characters <laughs> yeah and i and i've talked and one of the things that i like um i have uh, appreciate i learned a new appreciation for horror uh for me uh, from thanks to you and watching a uh -huh. set of really really good movies this one hits hits the the psychological thriller the psyche sphere a little bit not so much like i'm used to like i would prefer but it leaves it it leaves it in a way that um that the, that 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 is uh uh, good for me uh, that I that I prefer like I prefer like mm -hmm. an, like kind of like I don't want well I don't want, I'm not gonna say too much right now but uh, we'll, we'll say a little bit more might dip into spoiler a little bit but there's not much to spoil uh, to be honest with you but in that kind of a little bit of a spoiler there too but in any case um, mm -hmm. one of the things that I was telling you a lot the, about horror was that I just thought I just considered horror kind of like now every once in a while I'd see something that was really remarkable, like the ring or something like that, or or whatever, you know, in, in recent memory. Um, but I kind of had a bad taste in my mouth because I I conflated really bad slasher films as horror, and that's just not true. Um, that is just like not not even a huge sector of horror of the genre of horror that rep represents that horror can be mixed with many things. I've learned from you and other movies that we've mm -hmm. we've watched, but. <laughs> this one is the prototype. Um, this is the one that informed everybody, everything else. This is before Halloween. This is before it was just quite, it just didn't quite get the legs under it that, um, and I have no idea what the block, what the box office was for this. Uh, and I might pull that up uh, in a little bit, but it, um, yeah, it, I, I, was I forget surprised. the numbers exactly, but it, it did do well. It did it, definitely do. It, it, it made six times the money that it did. Right. Yeah, when it originally came out, than what it was made for. But yeah, it's it's one of those movies. Um, it, it also it, the the title of it originally was "Stop Me," and Bob Clark smartly renamed it "Black Christmas." And um, <laughs> it, it did. I, I think um, one of the screenshots you were showing had it. I think Silent Night, Evil Night. Mm -hmm. uh, they renamed it temporarily that for a little bit. I think when Warner Brothers was releasing it because they thought the uh, the the moniker Black Christmas might make people confused and think it's a black exploitation movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I had read. Black, I, yeah. I read in the yeah. research. Um, but yeah, yeah. This this one is um, this one. I I did enjoy this one. And you, this was already a favorite from for, from your perspective anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so this is my yeah, first yeah. time seeing it. Uh, like like a lot of these, that, uh, to be honest, uh, that that are horror or more obscure related, especially for me. I'm more like an average person, I guess, nerd, whatever, whatever that, mm -hmm. whatever that means to, to you. <laughs> but um, th this, th this had uh, good acting, good pacing. It, it had the the hallmarks of everything, even all the way out to the end. I did not, um, 
I don't really have much negative to say about this. Um, I, I, uh, some people might harp on how things go here a little bit, but I don't find that to be a negative. What I'm talking about is the ending. Uh, I don't, I did not that I thought that was a feature, not a bug, so to speak, uh, <laughs> so, so to speak, an asset, not a liability. <laughs> Um, and, and you also had the actresses here too, like that were also famous from this era too, as well. Yeah. Like later on, like she would go on to, or, or she, uh, Lois Lane here, <laughs> um, uh, Margot, <laughs> yeah, Kidder. Margot. yeah. Uh, yeah. and then, uh, of course, Olivia, um, Olivia, uh, Hussey, uh, Hussey, <clears throat> excuse me. Hussey, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's, um, yeah, yeah. That is, it's, um, got a lot of great actors in it and, uh, very yeah. much a, Can- a Canadian movie. Oh, uh, it was filmed in Canada and um, mostly has Canadian actors, except I think Olivia and a, a few others um, that are that were American or or <laughs> otherwise. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think she's British or yeah, something like that. Oh, but yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's got great acting and um, it was written by I think Roy Moore of the script and the script was 166 pages I think, uh, which would have made the movie. A, filmed uh, from the script about three hour movie, but wisely Bob Clark came in and uh, he added a lot of humor to it and, um, you know, shortened it down to a nice tight, I think 138 minutes. That's, that's the sweet spot for movies. I think Um, uh, today we've had these really big bloated movies that uh, really don't go anywhere. And this movie, you know, doesn't wear out. It's welcome. It's in and out and tells a really, fun and interesting story um set during christmas yeah and so you know the the basic story is um the it's a takes place uh primarily in a sorority house uh filled with girls and they're getting a creepy uh anonymous calls and uh it's very much a film of the the 70s of its time uh a lot of the the stuff they talk about is you know universal like um but uh but yeah there's a lot of uh there's like with the phone um and tracing calls and all that the hallmarks of a lot of older movies you know the whole thing of uh you know the you know, the, the 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 evil person that they they're trying to trace the call from it, it it's coming from within the house that that's become like a cliche this is the first movie that uh, really took yep. advantage of that that kind of myth, that uh, urban yeah. legend. <laughs> yeah, the, the phone call, the the empty house, the killer is still in the house, mm-hmm. the uh, the tension. Mm-hmm. Um, that, well, actually, that bridges to another point, which was which is um, this this movie puts on a clinic uh, for tension building um, or masterclass, mm-hmm. whatever you want to use that word there. For regardless, it it uh, it had like I said a prototype. For a way, a lot of movies, every other movie that you've ever seen, or mm-hmm. even the ones like, um, I think it was late '90s or early. No, maybe it was 2000s, where they had the, um, they made fun of the scary movies uh, franchise. Mm-hmm. You know that kind of whole thing, like where they, which were all hilarious. And then they kind of they did a series of those, like where they made fun of the horror genre. Um, and <laughs> uh, you, it, 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 this movie sets the stage for these classic tropes and, and different things, and it does it very well. Uh, because mm-hmm. this is the first considered the first, I believe, to do, especially intertwining of the um, holiday, some kind of holiday, you know, like Christmas or Halloween, you know, something like that, and then mm-hmm. kind of following through on it. Um, it, it follows through on it all the way through. For me, it, ne- it I enjoy. I, it was a little bit slower uh, in parts, but that should, could be related to era uh, and what I'm used to mm-hmm. or whatever. But you, you don't. It doesn't lose you. It didn't lose me. Um, mm-hmm. It was. It was, <laughs> and it is very much in the '70s for sure. Uh, but that that. <laughs> That uh, the way that it handles the storyline and the pacing, um, and all the <laughs> the classic things that come with it, um, even yeah. to this day, it is it's as um, synonymous as it was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it's up there with yeah. that, like that that type yeah, of and, uh, intro. Yeah, and the 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 framing. He's Bob Clark was a really wonderful director in that he excellent excellent the, cinematic the, vision. Yeah. The 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 way he stages things aren't showy, but it all works. Like um, he's the first one to use that. Well, uh, well, Peeping Tom, the movie Peeping Tom, uh, did this uh, previously, but um, uh, Bob Clark used the uh, the uh, the camera as the perspective of the killer. Yeah. You know, yeah, and wandering around. Yeah, the narration and 
uh, seeing that that camera kind of move around on the outside, you you're you're putting the 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 mindset or the the eyes of the the, the cre- creeping killer, and which is was used again in Halloween and uh, you know to further affect Sam Raimi in the Evil Dead movies. He went kind of uh, all out with with that as well. Um, and and it's uh, but yeah, it's very effective. And in fact, uh, with Halloween. Uh, a very young uh, Bob Clark uh, mentions this. Uh, he said that uh, a very young John Carpenter came to him at one point after this movie and said, um, "If you made a sequel to this movie, what would it uh, what would it be about, and uh, or how would you do it?" And uh, Bob said, "Well, I don't intend to make a sequel. I I, I don't want to. But if I did, uh, I I believe that the killer at, uh, would have been caught." Uh, was in a, a, a sane asylum for a long time, and then he, he, the day that he was released would be Halloween, and he would come back and uh, go on a killing rampage <laughs> in the yeah. in the city or in the town. And um, oddly enough, that kind of sounds a lot like Halloween, uh, <laughs> which uh, you, you don't know, say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> John Carpenter, uh, who we talked about last week or the, a couple weeks ago, uh, yeah went on uh, to use, uh, he saw a good idea that was going to go to waste since Bob wasn't going to make it uh, and um, made it, maybe he should have kind of uh, did a inspired by <laughs> from Cl- Bob Clark. But, uh, but yeah, uh, we wouldn't have had the uh, classic Halloween and where black Christmas um, was a great movie and uh, did well. Uh, it did, doesn't have, didn't have the legs of say Halloween um the the killer Billy in this didn't have that uh, flashy persona or look of Michael Myers in Halloween. Or, so or had yeah. ego really. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, other killers like other other kind of slasher type uh, derivatives, um, and there are endless derivatives uh, therein. Mm-hmm. Especially when once we hit the eighties, like that was, and some were you know really, they made their mark and, and were good enough. Um, mm-hmm. But th- this was one of those like where. Like you were saying, the 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 perspective, the visual narration, as you kind of build this tension, and you get a bird's eye view, so to speak, of like these these and these phone calls are <laughs> even <laughs> now, even now, like where <laughs> we 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 kind of live in a phone culture, but we kind of don't. Our phones to us mean completely different thing uh, for that. So, and maybe it would it it might be, um, and I think we've talked about this kind of sort of on the side. It might be fun to kind of revisit this like with a more modern. I actually think we have covered a couple more modern perspectives on different aspects of modernity and and horror, um, whether it's live streaming or you know the kind of these different new new concepts mm-hmm. like where these kind of like where this film. And, and I love mm-hmm. that about Bob Clark. Uh, he did. Uh, he didn't. He do Christmas Story into didn't he? Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say, <laughs> was gonna say he, he uh, had to throw that. Yeah, in there. yeah. He, he did. Uh, Two iconic Christmas movies, yeah, A Christmas Story and Black Christmas, uh, two big movies, two that I love. Uh, right. He also did uh, the, another iconic movie, Porky's. <laughs> uh, no, oh, for, that's uh, right. No, he maybe. did. I remember <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, so, that, so yeah. I was gonna say he knows. Uh, I love. I loved his answer when you we were talking about that interview or whatever. Like where he's like, mm-hmm. Nah, I'm good. Like. I, that is a great director, like a great director that uh-huh. understands no and understands limitations is always going to be a superior director in the, in the long run mm-hmm. because they limit they 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 limit their creativity, they limit the thing. So it doesn't become the sprawling morass like we have nowadays, like where it's just the endless mm-hmm. clones of clones of, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, but it, sorry, yeah. so it had a had a <laughs> drop there that yeah. Bob Clark is uh great direct like and and that's no different mm-hmm. the fa- that his uh his the way he directed this the way he paced it the way he he built everything out um i can't really speak anything to roy Moore, um aside from i saw that he did the follow up in 2006 for this or whatever it was uh the remake mm-hmm. which was not did not land as well as this i haven't seen it i don't know if you have but um but mm-hmm. bob clark is is great quality uh, everyone uh all, all down the line Kier Dulles, uh margo yeah. uh, uh, margo uh kitty um or yeah, Kidder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kidder. Kidder. Uh, Kidder. Yeah, and Olivia uh, Husi. Uh, they all are. They don't phone this in. <laughs> no, no uh, to to uh, put in a pun, but uh, no, the, the 
Uh, not to, to harken back to what I was saying, uh, Bob Clark, and there was no animosity between him and um, John Carpenter um, uh, with uh, with John uh, being inspired by what Bob said. But, uh, but yeah, I think yeah, uh, they mutually respected each other. And obviously John went on to uh, be the master class a filmmaker as well but but yeah the but yeah uh, uh, enough uh you you can't say enough about how bob kind of inspired this whole genre of movies and even though he doesn't believe his movies part of that it did uh, directly inspire it uh but uh but yeah and he 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 did something that those uh later movies uh got wrong in that he wanted all the characters to be real. He wanted to give them backstories. He wanted to give them character. He wanted to give them a, a story and he didn't want them to be just mindless, you know, bimbos. Uh, he didn't want to do sex scenes. He didn't want to have them in the shower uh, that they did later on in those slasher movies. Cause he didn't want to exploit these people. He wanted uh, them to be real. He wanted them to be real college students and he wanted that real humor in it. Uh, you know, uh, Margot Kidder, she does a great job with her role as this kind of smart ass, um, you know, <laughs> oh, kind yeah, of, that's uh, another side you know, too. worldly, 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 uh, woman that kind of, kind of, uh, is sort of like a, a, her own kind of perfect storm, uh, you know, uh, her own little mess. Um, she, <laughs> she's a, a, maybe a little bit of an alcoholic, uh, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, she kind of tears through her scenes uh, quite well, and um, they they did say that she she was constantly drinking during the movie, I, I guess, <laughs> to kind of get into character, I guess. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, uh, funny. Well, well, uh, just to speak a little bit on her for a, a, a minute, uh, Jess uh, plays like she doesn't play. Um, and even modern, the thing, the thing that I wanted to say about that was that modern, uh, modern movies um, screw this up so badly. Uh, like where they, and they, and this goes, uh, this applies for men and women, uh, but primarily relating to the, the, you know, having a female lead, a protagonist. Uh, uh, she does it so well. She's not helpless. <clears throat> she's not uh, overly, no. overly powered or, or super powered or, or anything like that. She's just like a. Just this normal gal with a good head on her shoulders and and, and trying to figure things out and and trying to get mm -hmm. just get through it, and um, yeah. again, this, this this does this so well. Uh, <laughs> modern movies could take they could learn a thing or two from the from the past and and directors like yeah. Bob Clark and actresses well, like this and actors uh, uh, that played in this yeah. this movie hundred yeah. percent all down the line yeah. yeah. It's something we yeah, screw Olivia. Up too much nowadays. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and Olivia, let's see, uh, her character uh, Jess is um, finds out she's pregnant uh, in the movie, and there's a subplot of her wanting an abortion and her her uh, boyfriend um, not wanting it. And uh, very there's, controversial, uh, there's, even back yeah, then. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And uh, they did ask Bob uh, about it, and he said there's there was no political. Mm. inclinations in it it was just mainly he wanted just part of the story them to be yeah part of the story and he wanted them to be able to talk about other things than than this you know crazed killer that's oh. running around oh by the way and, i got this weird yeah. phone call and somebody somebody's trying to kill me <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 and it, it raises tensions and whether or not her boyfriend's the killer or not uh which um yeah it just kind of shows you that you know uh, that that relation those relationships in college where you might uh, mix up with the guy that that seems nice but is kind of <laughs> kind of off kilter and crazy as well. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the the there's only one uh, yeah the whole whole uh, the the female perspective is played very well in this. Uh, there's a lot of the a lot of the male I would, I would say. yeah yeah. A lot of the male characters, almost all of them are flawed, except for maybe the uh, phone technician and the <laughs> the police, uh, uh, John Saxon as the uh, the police officer kind of investigating the situation. And John Saxon does a really great job. And he, he was sort of a last minute addition to the movie. I think Edmund O'Byrne uh, was hired on at, at, in the role. And when he showed up, they realized he was suffering from Alzheimer's. Oh, God. And, yeah, he um, he uh, wasn't sure exactly where he was. And, unfortunately, you know, they they 
they they kind of struggled with it, but they realized, you know, them out filming and, uh, you know, uh, below zero degree temperatures wouldn't be good for this man. And so they had to go ahead and let him go. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, he uh, was was upset. But, yeah, they, they did find John Saxon. And actually, I think Bob Clark said that he originally kind of wanted him in the role. And John Saxon uh, was in this. And iconically, he was also a police officer in uh, the first uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Mm. Right on. Yeah. Right and on. I, also, the, the guy that plays uh, one of the missing girl's father, he was so great at it. Uh, I forget his name. But uh, there's an interesting pair up between uh, the father and the the guy, uh, Chris, um, uh, the one of the, 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 the first girl that gets killed and goes missing. Uh, her father shows up and then he pair, um, pairs up with her, her boyfriend in search for her. And then I like that kind of uh, odd pairing of the two. They kind of seem to kind of bond together in the few scenes that they have. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, <clears throat> yeah. No, the, 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 they, that it's organic though. It's uh, this is mm-hmm. what I love about this, this, but you don't question anything as it unfolds because it's part of the story mm-hmm. And a good story draws you in like that. Mm-hmm. That's what I love. Another aspect that I love about this film, it draws you in. And that is something sorely missing from from like where if you're just beat over the head with exposition or like you're told or shown the mm-hmm. thing. No, 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 no. That, that's um, that, and that's the beauty of it uh, when you have a good writer behind this, too. So yeah. uh, um, in that, like I said, the story by the time you get to the second, third act, like the, these characters take kind of life of their own. So you kind of already know what they're going to do. If you're mm-hmm. the, you know, if you have the, if you're the, uh, the, the creative force mm-hmm. behind the thing, but yeah, the whole, the yeah. whole way through the, again, um, it was like this, I can see why people <laughs> love this one and, and why it's a classic. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, the humor is, is, is really good. And, and Very you well can done. see that in, you know, it, obviously he's a master at humor in that, you know, Christmas story. Um, that movie, uh, <laughs> I, I fell in love with it, um, you know, early on. And then, um, you know, it, it kind of got overexposed when people started doing the TBS um, 24 hour marathons where, uh, so it kind of, kind of gets creeps into the, that Monty Python kind of, um, uh, yeah, Holy Grail, where you go, okay, yeah, it's a good movie, but I'm sick of it because everybody you know, talks about it. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's still a classic and it's still funny. A blessing for um, the Lord. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so, but but this movie, the humor in it is so natural. Um, the there's the the bumbling police officer Nash, <laughs> who they that they unfortunately have to kind of deal with, and uh, there's a uh, kind of a joke played at his expense uh, with a with a certain word uh, that uh, that she puts in their their phone number uh, that get, has a wonderful payoff uh, later on in the movie. But Nash Nash is such a, a a wonderful kind of goofy character, you know. Nash is one of those people that you you've worked with, you've known, you've you've uh, had a relationship with that person, that that guy that that just kind of out there in his own world, uh, and you kind of, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's a wonderful kind of character, character, but he, he's a, he's almost a caricature, but he's not. In a most movies, he'd be a caricature, but right. he does ha- kind of have a hero moment towards the. Uh, towards the end of the movie where he's really passionately trying to get this girl to safety over the phone right. and the, the humanity of him kind of comes out in. And so he's not really a joke character. All no. of the characters, even if they're, they're used kind of humorously throughout the movie that you do see their humanity uh, at certain points uh, the house mother of the sorority. She's kind of that, the kind of boozing uh, <laughs> kind of boozing uh, uh, you know, older lady that that's kind of a caricature of a lot of um, older women in cinema, but but she she also had, kind of has her own her own moments, and um, you kind of see who she is, uh, even though it's you know maybe kind of brief, but right. everybody has has kind of their their moment so to speak in this movie. Yeah, that that that's what I wanted to say too. Uh, you hit on it perfectly. Um, whether it's the the pacing and some of the criticisms that I've I 
if anything, people don't either they don't like the pacing or they don't like the slowness. It, it, it just puts them out, I guess, for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't understand that. But it, it sure can go a little bit slower. But that's the that's the point, though. The point, though, mm-hmm. is this not only is it the first to do a lot of these concepts, and it, but it does it, it does them well and it does them uniquely. And that's why the uh-huh. humor works. That is why the natural, even the iconic, the 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 plastic bag, you know, the the dry uh, <laughs> dry cleaning bag over the head or whatever the hell it is, you know, mm-hmm. like and, and then put up in the attic, you know, like these are all mm-hmm. uh, in a sorority house, uh, you know, with bumbling cops, you know, like or mm-hmm. you know with with a, a tension, unnatural tension between certain main characters that cast mm-hmm. put you in that ambiguity of like, <laughs> which is w- mm-hmm. why it's kind of like uh, and another fun thing is. Like all, like all these, all these, um, you know, like what would that that uh, board game? Um, I can't remember what it's basically like, you know, so and so in the library with the mm-hmm. candlestick or whatever, like that. A whodunit, <laughs> right. you know, like a who done it type flick. Mm-hmm. Um, Clue, yep. Mm-hmm. But even yeah, thank you, yeah. But even this mm-hmm. does does that uniquely and well uh, for for what it does because it does as we get into it here, like it it kind of builds, but that there's a reason why mm-hmm. it, it builds. Everyone le- le- masterfully leads into another, and um, that is just something that you can't get too much mm-hmm. of nowadays. Yep, and uh, the town's called Bedford, uh, which is a nod to um, "It's a Wonderful Life," <laughs> uh, the town of Bedford. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, there's um, some wonderful, wonderful stuff to this movie. Um, and yeah, the one of the, the uh, things I was gonna let's see. Uh, but yeah, it's it, uh, there's there's those seasonal horror movies that um, the holiday movies that that come out, and this is the the first one to kind of latch upon that uh, idea, and that there's um, there's that that wonderful tension between it being Christmas and all the the joy that 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 provides, uh, but but there's kind of a dark side to Christmas as well, you know who who hasn't had sort of a, a a bad christmas and this this movie kind of emboldens all those uh those those wonderful s- scenes you know when when the the tree is lit up but but you're kind of in a, a dark mood and you know you're you're maybe in the the darker part of the room this this movie kind of captures that those those feelings of of even though it's bright and cheery um there's there can uh, at the same time be be this darkness going on and um there's a wonderful scene in the towards the middle of it where these carolers show up oh yeah and <laughs> yeah and there's there's that 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 in the back of the, your mind you're saying to yourself oh you know this this is kind of a, a plot hole that they, they wouldn't have these kids out singing carols uh with someone just murdered out on the streets you know mm-hmm. doing a carol and you're kind of thinking that as you're watching uh uh, uh jess watch these kellers but they uh, but it's it's not wrong um news didn't travel that mm-hmm. fast in the 70s no. um and in fact it during the towards the end of the scene another mother shows up to get them off the streets because there's a killer <laughs> possibly loose and uh, to, exactly to protect those happened. kids yep uh huh. Yeah, and that that's kind of a wonderful scene. That it all plays out uh, how how you would think it would. And another thing about these movies that I think sometimes gets it wrong. Uh, a lot of times when you have a, a mysterious killer and you uh, do unveil it towards the end of the movie, you run the risk of it kind of playing out like a like a bad Scooby Doo episode <laughs> where you know you have to have that that ex- explanation that, uh, towards the end. And this movie does not do that. It, it, there's a lot of mystery to this as far as who's doing it and how it's doing it and what actually happens toward the end of the movie. We won't go too in detail. Um, maybe uh, maybe we will a little later. But but yeah, there's that wonderful and uh, a lot of, a lot of the American people that distributed that movie uh, wanted um, Bob to go back and change the ending so that there's a clear a uh, clear killer in it and he resisted i think he fam- you know it, it makes it brings this movie to a level of a, a higher level because there's that mystery there's that that constant oh well who was it and it it, it makes the movie stick in your mind you, you you're thinking about the movie if you tie it up with a bright bow i think with a lot of movies that tie things up with a bright bow and tells you the the explanation 
Right. Those movies don't stay with me. Those those movies, especially the the ending of those movies, it's like right. okay, okay, I get it, I get it, and move on. And you don't really think about it, and you maybe you forget about the movie in a week or two. But this movie leaves you with so many questions. Um, it plays in your mind and it stays with you. And and it's a, one of those movies that you go, well, well, maybe there's something I kind of missed, and it, it brings you back in. And uh, I've seen this movie several times, and I was just in, as engaged uh, this time watching it than than any other. You know, it's it's it has uh, there's a lot of little details that you can kind of pull out. Like I love um, the the room, the everything looks lived in and lived in in the 70s. And one of the girls' rooms that they go into um, is just kind of a snapshot of what a woman's. Uh, a young woman's uh, room would look like in college with the poster of the, the, the granny uh, <laughs> with the flipping up, flipping the bird. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. The, the, um, the other th- the thing too, I wanted to uh, mention was the fact that um, on, on the related on the killer, although this didn't quite hit the psyche sphere. Like I like the like the movies that, that had kind of maybe swerve over the line where there might be some kind of external element that could be mm-hmm. otherworldly or something or, or hint at or mm-hmm. uh, e- e- ethereal or something like that. Um, like where you don't quite know how you feel this one. Definitely. You mm-hmm. know how I, the, the opposite of that was this one. You know how you feel about it for sure. And the fact that um, I believe Bob Clark had, he didn't just have one necessarily a voice actor do the killer's uh, phone calls and voice. He had multiple people do the, do the, that role. So it adds mm-hmm. to this kind of like, you think that yep. you you're getting uh you think that you're getting a bead on this person and in reality mm-hmm. you you don't you're just you are just as clueless to as to who you think it is and then the next scene comes through and you think it's some it, it completely throws you off off your game <laughs> a little bit if you are into yeah. that uh but um it, it, you could enlist that this is a good thing about movies like this where it's it's up I love it when I love it when the director and the and the actors and everybody involved uh, trust the audience enough to come away with their own conclusions because you don't need to be told mm-hmm. everything and that you know that mm-hmm. that that mystery that air of it uh is uh, it, it permeates good movies. Sometimes it can land on a flat note, don't get me wrong. Um mm-hmm. but for this one it works very well. Um and I'm glad that I'm glad that he did it like that. Uh because I'm glad there is no yeah. definitiveness around it because you're from the not from the first scene because it's slow it's a little bit slower paced than that even though it's only an hour and 38 minutes like you were saying it, mm-hmm. it's it's not like right into it it does it's not overly gory mm-hmm. it's not overly sexual it's not overly it's it's obscene in some areas obviously but mm-hmm. it's not like it would be um taken to the nth degree like in a cheesy campy corny kind of way um there is none of that like this is the exact opposite mm-hmm. of like a campy yeah kind of vibe or, or kitschy kind of feel, you know, yeah. cheap feeling, I guess, is what mm-hmm. I would be going after. Everything is very, very durable and high quality. And like I said, unique and, and, and well, well made. Uh, all through. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, with a director, they have to have good instincts. And I think uh, Bob Clark has really good instincts uh, in making this in that he 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 recorded all of those um the phone calls afterwards uh on the set he, he he was the one on the phone with the women and he didn't say anything too outrageous just because he wanted their reactions to be kind of uh kind of the, the reactions to be not overwhelmed and uh, you know over the top he wanted them to be you know, kind of, you know, how how a person would naturally react is like, oh my gosh, what's going on? But they're kind of listening, but they're not, and they're not going crazy over it. No. Um, which, which if <laughs> obviously if he had played what was they were going to record would have been kind of <laughs> kind of shocking, and they would have maybe uh, uh, tended to overreact with that. And and so yeah, that was that was very smart of him um, to do. And um, you know, it's you. Uh, he wants the audience to be reacting that way and not, not the women. So you, you're having that guttural reaction to the, the horrible things that, that, that little, <laughs> that Billy's saying and, and shout out to Billy. Um, I, I haven't listened to it. I, I have the Blu-ray of it, but um, I can't find it. I had to watch it off of Tubi this time, but, uh, but there's a audio commentary track 
done by the the voice uh, the main voice of Billy uh, in the in the voice of Billy. <laughs> so I need to go back and uh, maybe listen to that. Uh, I'm sure that's that's uh, that will be entertaining. And also another shout out to Billy. Uh, I you know how you can rename your router. Uh, mm-hmm. My router uh, in my house is named Billy. Um, so shout out to Billy. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And this, this is like, this is everywhere. Uh, actually, um, I don't just watch this a little bit slow sometimes on the uptake, but, um, mm-hmm. I, I actually, I could, I could watch it on, um, YouTube. Um, okay. yeah, I, I could watch it. It was, I don't know if that's because I pay for YouTube or not, but I have no idea, but it's, it's maybe that's why. But it's everywhere. But it's uh, it's yeah, so it hard yeah, to find. Yeah, it's very very accessible. You know, some movies that we talk about um, for whatever reason are, are kind of hard to find streaming, and that's why you probably should uh, invest in uh, physical media. <laughs> but uh, shout out to Arrow Films. I uh, got a package from them this past week of a uh, number of movies that I I ordered. But yeah, it's um it's one of those movies that um. I noticed that they did come out with a 4K of uh, Black Christmas last year, and I was tempted to buy it this year, but um, uh, the, the Amazon, uh, that two-day delivery isn't quite what it used to be. Uh, they were, I was going to order it and maybe watch it for our um, for our take on this, and uh, you know, Amazon was like, nope, you're going to get it after Christmas. So I was like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I think it kind of, it, it kind of, it, I think it definitely fluctuates the quality of service you get depending upon where you live mm-hmm. and what time of year and whatnot. Um, I, mm-hmm. I've definitely had some, some mess ups from from them before, but or yeah. or like, or or mm-hmm. wait, or I order something that's not Amazon Prime or whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But uh, I was gonna say, uh, uh, oh, oh, are you kidding me? Uh, up there, okay, thank God. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, whatever, whatever. All right, so. No, th- this um, and there there was remakes in two thousand six and two thousand nineteen, I guess. But um, yeah, none of those. Yeah, th- anything that I read, and of course, I have not seen them. So for all I know, this could be whatever. Take it with a grain of salt. But I've read that they they do not hit the mark that the original did. Um, well, in, in um, I'll, I'll I'll speak about that in a in a minute. But, sure. because uh, because I, I do have some thoughts on it. But yeah, yeah, another thing that I love about this movie is. I love, I absolutely love the, the 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 phone tech guy. Um, mm. I love that character. <laughs> I don't know what it is. He's he's great, and and uh, when he's on the phone and setting up the wiretap for the phones to trace the killer, um, his name's Graham, and uh, there are, and he 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 picks up uh, the phone to phone in that he's he's tapping the line. He said, "Hey, this is Graham. I'm on Bell Street, Graham Bell. I love the little, little right. play there. <laughs> uh, whether or not you can, uh, you got that or not, but I love that. <laughs> and 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 then the whole scene. Now, when they're saying uh, we're going to trace the wire, we're going to uh, we're going to you know find who's calling you. I I you you hear that tra- trace the wire is like okay, whatever. Right. In this movie, you understand what what tracing the wire meant." He's actually going, and it's wonderful to see the guy running, uh, trying to find the wire that it's triggering. And I don't know how how realistic this is. I assume it is pretty realistic. But there's that tension, that wonderful tension that's uh, being made by him physically running. Whereas uh, today, uh, (laughs) if you're making a, a similar horror movie now, you know, it would be you know kind of a bored guy you know at a keyboard doing the doing the whole thing, <laughs> you know, clocking away. Whereas this guy's oh, running, <laughs> running, trying to find. Right. Yeah. Uh, doesn't have the the same vibe as as this, but I love love that scene and the fact that uh, Bob Clark was able to bring that tension and make it exciting. And and again, I really like the the actor that played. I, you could see him as a, a, a phone tech guy. Uh, all the actors that are here, even though uh, all the um, sorority women are, are way older than they, they probably would be in in college at that time. They, of course, they cast kind of older uh, back then <laughs> right. uh, to avoid, uh, you know, working restrictions. But, um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, everybody kind of looks the part. And um, the... Uh, the one of the actresses uh, was uh, characters was going to be played by Gilda Radner, uh, but um, she she had a conflict with Saturday Night Live, 
and Andrea Martin ended up playing her mm. in uh, this this film. And Andrea Martin famously is one of the comedians from SCTV, one of my oh, favorite man. shows. <laughs> uh, I love it. Yep. When, yeah, I love SCTV. Rick yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, uh, Martin Short and all of them. Yep. Um, Joe Joe Flaherty, Eugene Levy, Catherine O'Hara, uh, <laughs> all of them. Uh, I love I love SCTV. I don't I, I love Canada. I love SCTV. Uh, but yeah, way 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 more than the Saturday Night Live ever. So yeah, it was a joy seeing Andrea Martin again. One of my favorite comedians, uh, along with Catherine O'Hara. And um, to pick up on the sequels. Andrea Martin is in the 2006 uh, remake oh. uh, as as the house mother, um, so funny. she got to re- return to it. I think uh, both her and Margot Kidder were possibly going to be in it, but she she ended up being in it. I've seen the 2006. Obviously, it doesn't live up to <laughs> the greatness of the 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 original, but it's actually a very competent. I came into it not expecting much, but I really enjoyed it. And uh, Bob Clark gave it his nod of approval. Uh, he uh, he uh, he he liked it. He saw it before it, it came out, or yeah, when it came out, and gave his stamp of approval. And um, during the 2000s, when I um, first uh, uh, became aware of Black Christmas and started to you know learn more about it and about Bob Clark and how <laughs> his wonderful legacy as a filmmaker and that he was still a filmmaker. And I was very excited to start following him. And at that time, uh, 2006, he started uh, when the the sequel came out. He was actually, or, or the the remake. He was actually planning for a sequel uh, mm-hmm. with Olivia Hussey as Jess coming back. And I was very excited about about a sequel. And unfortunately, uh, in 2007, a, a drunk driver. Uh, killed both Bob Clark and his son in a tragic um, car accident, uh, ending, uh, unfortunately, their lives. And, and so we're forever left with what, what could have been um, and, you know, a, a tragic end to a wonderful film career of, of Bob Clark. And, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it, it says something about, you know, uh, you know, responsibility and, and, you know, maybe, especially during the Christmas time of this year, you know, if you've had a, a few drinks, you know, don't, don't hit the road, you know, Uber up, lift up. Yep. Nope. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no, no excuse nowadays, uh, especially for that. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Mothers against drunk driving uh, taught us that for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I'll yeah. Go have and a good time by, mm-hmm. by all means, but uh, don't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And take um, out Bob Clark. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> So yeah, the the sequel or the the remake of the 2006 remake is it's good. Um, the one in the 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 teens, I forget what year it came out. Uh, 2016 or something like that. But uh, but it 19. Okay. Um, I didn't see it. I, I like like you. I heard bad things about it. I don't really care to. I mean, yeah. If if the first two were good, um. Chances are the third, you know, third's probably not going to be. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you're not going to get, you're not going to get three, three in a row that are good. But, uh, but yeah, so, so yeah, um, I'm happy with the the first two. Um, maybe we might um, revisit the sequel. I know that it's out there, but uh, but there's a lot of uh, other Christmas movies I would like to. Uh, and th- th- that's the that's the good thing and bad thing about our show is um, there's so many things that I, I want to cover uh for christmas uh but it, we only have one a year so right. but that that just means we have so many more things to do in in the future so um, year three is looking pretty good so you never know yeah <laughs> yep yep and uh yeah so i'm very happy that we got to talk about black christmas this this year and again it's one of my my favorites and i hope hopefully it will be one of yours if you haven't seen it yet it's uh definitely worth checking out and uh it's a uh, one of the the best or uh, most famous and I think um, uh, most uh, made the most money of of any of the other Canadian movies. Uh, most one of the most popular Canadian movies. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. It is a uh, it, it yet again. Um, I find with these these horror films that I am, you know, 
either mix mix genre horror or, or something along those lines or something right up my alley with the supernatural kind of weird eerie ambient you're on that fringe of of reality or whatever whatever it is um like true detective that mm-hmm. that type of of vibe as the kids say um mm-hmm. this hits the mark um i love that it, it ends the way it does i wouldn't change anything um, I would be curious now that, now that the, um, cause I, I would love to, um, revisit this maybe in, uh, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe we can do Christmas in July and we can do black <laughs> Christmas, the remake, uh, the 2006 <laughs> version and, and see, see, go from there. Uh, there's always yep. that, that fun. Uh, but I, I actually would love to compare and contrast this cause it would be another avenue to watch this again, kind of like for, with fresh eyes with a little bit of time, uh, time mm-hmm. distance between now and then. Um, that that could be a thing for sure, but um, I I would love to. I'd, I'd invite that, and I, like you were saying, invite the audience in to go make up their own mind. Um, yeah, this is something and- that you're not going to be disappointed in, and it's um another thing I love about these kind of movies from the '60s or the '70s or the '80s, or even the '90s done done very well. It it uh, the era uh, that they live in, um, like you were saying, lived in. You use the words lived in, like mm-hmm. it, it is it, it's real uh, and and. Although I wasn't born in the seventies, obviously, um, it mm-hmm. wasn't too different, you know, t- uh, you know, 10 mm-hmm. years later, you know, when I was young, young, young buck coming up and I know for you too mm-hmm. as well. Um, it, mm-hmm. it, but I love that. I love that. It captures that. That's what I loved about possession. Um, and some of the giallos, um, uh, from there, like the, the, the era, the, the automobiles, the, the everything, mm-hmm. um, it mm-hmm. fits and it's not done in a poor way. It's done in a very mm-hmm. high quality, unique, well, well-made uh, yeah, right. yeah. Um, obviously, you know, um, yeah. The, this I, I lived uh, lived through a little bit of this, uh, some of the seventies, uh, and and was conscious during most of it. But um, but yeah, the the fact that that cinema is is such a reflection of the times uh, is is true. I mean, obviously, it it's true. maybe uh a lot of times maybe like in the the sixties and fifties and forties it was maybe a little bit more of a cleaned up version right. uh in reality was probably a bit more grittier and grimier than uh what is portrayed on the on the screen but the seventies sort of got into that the realness the grittiness of reality and wanting to capture that so i think um during the seventies was a was a great time and maybe the the late sixties was a great time for cinema in in, in capturing those 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 real moments you know the, obviously there was always those movies that kind of try to go beyond that and make a glitz everything up but true. but yeah uh, 70s is, is kind of known for that grittiness and when i see a 70s movies it kind of takes me back to that time and and uh just how how lived in everything kind of seemed during the 70s more so than maybe it does uh today but yeah it's it's a a wonderful time capsule and also you know, if you're a fan of the movie, you have some uh, famous um, compatriots. Uh, one of the things uh, Olivia Hussey said that when she um, went to do something, act in a, something with Steve Martin, uh, Martin was like, oh, you're in one of my favorite movies. And she was thinking, because she's famously uh, known for doing Romeo and Juliet. Um, and uh, he goes, no, no, it's uh, Black Christmas. I've, right. I've seen it. I've seen it twenty-seven times. <laughs> you know, he knew the number of times he'd Holy seen time. it. And and uh, there's a rumor that that was Elvis's uh, favorite Christmas movie, and that That's he watched funny. it every year, <laughs> every year, which uh, they said would only have been two or three times because you know he died sure. in seventy-seven. But mm-hmm. uh, but uh, from the the rumor is that his family kind of. Um, you know, the, carried on that tradition of watching this movie afterwards. So yeah, that's, it's kind of kind of interesting. And um, yeah, and the, another fun fact: Olivia Hussey did this movie on the advice of her psychic, because uh, her psychic <laughs> said that she was going to make a movie in Canada and um, she would have a wonderful success with it. So <laughs> so that was why. And uh, 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 Margot Kidder and. Olivia didn't quite get along on set. Um, Margot was kind of put off by Olivia's um, constant talk of uh, Paul McCartney and how she wanted to marry him. <laughs> <laughs> she was a bit obsessed with <laughs> with him and uh, you know spirituality and, and psychics and whatnot. And um, 
Margot was more of a down to earth uh, kind of kind of woman, it seems, and I think she got along uh, well with um, Andrea Martin and the the rest of the cast, from what what she said. But but yeah, uh, uh, it, it, one one other fun fact: um, the guy who played Chris, I forget his name, um, in the movie, he has this this <laughs> wonderfully seventies kind of fur coat <laughs> right. uh, that he wears in most of the scenes and. In fact, uh, he personally owned owned that coat, and uh, the movie had such a low budget that uh, the actors were encouraged to bring their own uh, clothes to the wardrobe. set. So uh, <laughs> wardrobe. So he 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 owned that coat, and um, from the I guess uh, the the interview that he gave, he he actually still had it in his closet. So <laughs> that, that coat funny. coat lives on, even though you know the. the Billy um, may have killed off most of the characters. Uh, the the coat survived. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, too, um, I think we're coming to come up here on the end of the caboose, as, mm-hmm. a, as I say. But uh, I was going to say, as a pop quiz to our audience, if you have seen this movie uh, and you have stayed with us this long, I have a question for the audience. If you could put your answer in the comments, it would be great. Um, mm-hmm. In the movie, there was a, there was an, uh, a Morris Code message that was uh, played out uh, on the phone as one of the many obscure things that happened, <laughs> very weird things that happened on the phone. Mm-hmm. Um, if you could tell us what that Morse code is, uh, we will be, uh, mm-hmm. we will give you a, uh, we'll give you a pat on the back. <laughs> <And laughs> we'll call it out uh, publicly. Our, our, we'll, we'll mention your, your tag, your channel. Uh, if you mm-hmm. want, uh, if you, if you answer that, uh, that question, but in any case, um, oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know if this is tied to <laughs> what you're talking about, but because uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but at the end of the movie, the the phone rings. Uh, guess how many times it rings? How many? Thirteen. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no. This was uh, when when they Lucky. pick up the phone and then they, they oh, do okay. a certain kind of they 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 mess oh, with uh-huh. the thing like and they. But if you're astute, uh, and of course I didn't, I got that from a note. So, <laughs> like, gotcha. I, that was that sharp eyed art. I've seen it twenty times. I've seen it three more times than C. Martin did back in the day. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, no, th- this this one is going to be uh, the best compliment that I can pay for a movie, aside from you know uh, exclaiming its its virtues, uh, would be the fact that I would want to rewatch it. Um, and I can definitely tell you, probably sooner than later, I'm going to be. I'm, I'm just going to want to enjoy this just for fun um, because it does pull you in. It has a very, it has a, it has a charm all, all its own that pulls you in that makes it last. Um, especially with uh, everything that we've, we've talked about up to this point. Um, a great, great film to go check out. Um, if you're, if you've never seen it, I've never seen it. Uh, and I'm glad that we got mm-hmm. to cover it this week, especially on Christmas being tomorrow. <laughs> this is Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, well, mm-hmm. and of course we always, we, we hope you guys have a, uh, all the nerds out there, all the, the first, the last, uh, nerds out there, whether you, you're, you're first to, to something or you're the, the last, uh, you just discovered it yesterday. Like I did today yeah. for this, uh, we, we, yeah. we encourage you to, uh, have fun with your families and, uh, and enjoy the, the, your downtime during this, this time of year. And hopefully, I don't yeah. know about you, but the weather out here, it, we, I was hoping we could have a white Christmas. There still could happen, but. <laughs> nah, not when it's 50, 60 degrees out here in the in flyover state, uh, flyover country. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I you, think but... um, the most we'll, we can hope for is some rain, <laughs> some dreary rain. But yeah, uh, I, I think I've only had um, a handful of, of white Christmases, but those are always kind of special. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> kind of fun. When they happen, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, sure. yep, yep. And uh, to echo your sentiments, I hope all you nerds out there get what you want, like your graphic novels mm-hmm, sure. your your books your <laughs> your video games um and in the comments let us know what you uh what you got if you got what you perfect. wanted <laughs> perfect absolutely yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh, i don't know you have anything else to add or say uh before we before we wrap up the uh the the show here no just um i don't get many anonymous callers i usually just get um <laughs> I usually get those uh, telemarketers uh, <laughs> wanting uh, <laughs> yep. to uh, to sell me something, or or uh, or there um, there's uh, there's always something wrong with my Windows. They they they, they tell me and uh, that someone's trying to hack in and um, uh, they're they're Microsoft, although they have a 
heavy, heavy accent. I don't know uh, what's going on there. <laughs> right, right on. Right. On. <laughs> well, I, I think uh, we, uh, all, if you've made it this far, we thank you very much for uh, watching, listening, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, mm-hmm. And we will, we'll see you next week. Um, and we're going to be going into the new year uh, very strong. Um, stay mm-hmm. tuned. Might have a Guns special. Blazing. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, we might have an extra <laughs> special New Year's one coming out here. Uh, you know, we don't know. Well, we'll, well we got yep. something in the works. Um, yeah, Santa, and, Santa might have brought us something, so uh, uh, we uh, <laughs> may spruce things up a little bit. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but in that case, uh, I think that's it, and uh, I think we're gonna mm-hmm. fade uh, or go to the uh, thing. Yeah. I, so I didn't get I didn't get a, a, a outgoing quote like I should have, but uh, that's okay. Uh, this has been Mike. Yeah, uh, and I'm Thomas, and uh, Billy, uh, Billy won't tell Agnes uh, that you didn't do that. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Agnes, <laughs> Agnes. And we hope you have a happy, a uh, holly jolly slashing, Black Christmas. Black Christmas. This has been a, the first to last the Nerddom production. <laughs>